Stand up, Florence. What do you mean my hospital is disgraceful? I'm doing my best for these soldiers. All your nurses are drunk. Excuse me, my nurses are not drunk. They may be a little wobbly on their feet. It's because they are tired. No, it isn't. They are drunk. Well done, Zoe. That was absolutely brilliant. Went She's on between Florence. For these year two pupils, this drama lesson is one of the highlights of the week. We get more ideas on it and it's and more it's fun. fun than it's just more fun. thinking in your head. And when we act it out, we have quite a lot of ideas to write down. At Dallas Community Primary School in Lancaster, drama is an essential part of the pupils' education. Boys do struggle with their writing, and so I wanted to have something in, in the classroom that helped the boys, and boys enjoy drama. Boys love to talk to each other, they love to get in role, and once they've done that, this can then lead into the writing. And that started me off, and I've obviously opened out to all the other children in class. What we're going to do is we're going to retell the story of Florence Nightingale and you're going to be using your bodies and you're also going to be using your voice. What I want you to be doing is really thinking about what that character is going to be saying, what the character's facial expression is going to be like. Florence Nightingale topic is stretched over um, a six week block. We're just about in the middle at the moment. Right. The lesson starts with a warm up exercise. Oh, we get. Are you ready? Maths or English? Maths. Warm-up games are really important because you can't just move into, right, we're going to recreate the role of Florence Nightingale, off you go. You need to set them up to get the children thinking, what do I need to do, where do I need to go, talking to each other. Do we need to scream at each other? Right, that's what we're doing. We need to think about our communication. I'm glad we've had this warm-up game because the communication I'm talking about in our drama lesson is not shouting at each other. So we'll have one more go and we will really think about communication. Blue school jumper, green school jumper. What do you prefer? Yes, which is your favourite? and freeze. Right, that was so much better. I think drama has the potential to actually bring out within children particular aptitudes that you never saw before. And I think you can be scared and think, I'm not sure how children are going to relate to this. But I think it's very important in drama that we set clear parameters from the start. So it's really important before we start to set the scene. OK, so I'm going to think, first of all, about our bodies. So we're going to do this without losing our voices. What's our body going to do to show me that you understand what's happening in the story? Just get yourself a bit of space. I want you to show me what she might have used to get all the way from London to Scutari. Off you go. I think it's important that the children learn about the facts in history before they can begin to reenact any roles. The children need to um, have a really good understanding of who Florence was and what she did before that they can recreate the role of being Florence. I would like you to think about her coming across the sea. What form of transport and what was she doing? You don't just need to be the vehicle you can be whatever, set the scene. Use your bodies. Bobby, can you just show me what you were doing? Can you tell me what you're doing, Bobby? Pulling the mast up. Why are you doing that, Bobby? So we can go faster. Why would that make us go faster? Because wind would catch it and move us. Absolutely brilliant. Nell, now then, Nell, can you tell me? Are you sick? Well, you were being sick, weren't you? Can you tell me why you're being sick? Because the sea gets a bit rough. Can you tell me who you are? Are you Florence Nightingale? Did she get sick while she was in Skatari, Nell? Yeah. She did, didn't she? And she might have got sick while she was travelling on the boat because it was a long journey. I think that's an excellent idea. 
I think drama absolutely is one of the most inclusive techniques that we have available to us because it makes no assumptions about prior ability. It makes assumptions about setting a context and allowing a child to explore through empathy a situation they may not have explored before. And in that way, it's often a leveller because nobody has a greater ability to adapt in drama than any other person. Right, are you ready? I want you to walk towards... Joshua. I work with a young girl called Georgina. She's got ADHD, so she finds it very difficult to concentrate in normal lessons. But when it comes to drama, she's really receptive. Um, she loves doing drama. We can take a book and we'll read a book and then she just wants to act out what she's read. Georgina, can you tell me what you were doing? I was being a bird. What sort of bird were you being, Georgina? A pigeon. You were being a pigeon. That's absolutely brilliant, Georgina. Were you flying high in the sky? Yeah. Excellent. It's a really good way of getting inside her head. Once she's acted something out, she likes to go over it and over it again. So once she's picked up on something, you can be acting the same scenario out for quite a while until she decides to act another one. But you know that what she's learned, she's learned and it's in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split you into groups and you're going to retell the different parts of the story in your group. You're going to think about what your body's doing especially your face and you're also going to think about the noises that you might need to make okay because that's very very important I really want to go dad you can't play me if all the soldiers are really you're not going I can go the, the soldiers are all dying I'm Florence Nightingale and I'm really sad my dad won't let me go because he said it's really dirty. Um, Florence Nightingale's sister. I think she could go, but she would have to look after them. I think she's not allowed to go because there's rats and mouses and spiders, and you don't want her to get dirty. What was happening on that battlefield, Ronan? Soldiers were dying. Soldiers were fighting. I want to see that reenacted. I want to see the battlefield. I want to see what was happening there. I differentiate by walking round and questioning the children. So you're one of the soldiers. You're fighting in battle. Have I got in this scene any wounded soldiers? Do you maybe want to think about maybe one of you reenacting? a wounded soldier, and how would you get him off that battlefield? Can we think about that as well? Thank you very much. Sir. It's good to be in a team because we speak to each other and we all get ideas. I got an idea to lie against the wall and you got an idea to lie on people. So we worked as a team. Can we all just turn your head and look at this group here? Can you tell me, soldiers, what it is that you're moaning about? Um, don't we are feeling sick because of the bad conditions. Can you tell me just one thing that's bad about the conditions? We have to sleep in dirty mattresses. I'm going to become Florence Nightingale. Can I hold your hand? <coughs> oh, have you been awake all night? You have? If I go and get you some cool water and I put it on your head and on your cheeks, I think that's going to bring your temperature down. And I'm going to go and do that for you and maybe you can get some sleep. And that's what I want to see you do, Florence. You talked for them all the way through the night. So I'd like to see you doing that when we set off again. Well done, this group. One of the challenges of setting up drama with children is that you're changing the perception that they have of a teacher and a teacher's role. So I don't think it is something you could just delve into and immediately expect that the children will accept that the teacher who was always lovely to them on the carpet and said things in a particular way and had certain expectations has suddenly lost the plot and decided to do something completely different. And that needs explaining to the children. 
they need to understand and they also need to have a mechanism to be able to say if they're not comfortable with the situation. And I think as long as those parameters are set, then it works well. I think that face is fantastic. Why have you got that face? Because I'm so cross with them, because they said my hospital is disgusting and dis dirty. Can I just listen to the conversation that's happening? This hospital is disgusting and disgraceful. How dare you say that? This is my hospital and I want to treat my soldiers this way. Well, the bedding hasn't been changed at all, has it? Well, I think my... That's OK, my... that's OK, keep going. You think your soldiers are what? Do you think that you've treat... treated them well? You tell her that, you tell Florence that. How dare she come to your hospital? How dare you come to my hospital? You should go straight back where you come from. Those children who are a little bit intimidated, I do a lot more thought tracking uh, while the other children are experimenting together so that they feel they are performing to me, but not necessarily performing to the rest of the class and it's very important that they do have a go. Can I come over to the role play area? And what I'd like you to do is to just come and see what's happening in the role play area. Contained within the classroom is a role play area designed to extend the learning of all children. So if you have your able and talented group that you'd like to go in the role play area, it's important that you put a scenario in there that they need to think about. You need to start their learning off and they will take it further. And also, for those children who find it very difficult to communicate with each other, then they need to be able to dress up. They need to have more props. I'm going to melt you, please, Sam. Can you tell me who you are? <laughs> I'm the dirty nurse. You're one of the dirty nurses? Do you think you're helping the soldier with your dirty hands and your dirty bandages? Do you think that's helping them? Yes. You do, do you? Would Having you a role play area in the classroom has had a dramatic effect on the children. It's encouraged them to write better stories. It's encouraged them to play in role with their critical friends. Put your hand up if you think that acting out the story and actually being in role has helped you understand what actually happened. Put your hand down. I was evaluating all the way through the lesson, talking to the children, not necessarily as a whole group, but evaluating what they were doing all the way through. And then at the end, it's important to show them what the next step's going to be. Why have we done this? And where are we going next? And I think that the next part of our learning journey might be that if we change roles and we try something else, I think that might help us to get a full understanding of the story. I can entirely see why teachers would say, why drama, very full packed curriculum. What I would say is, problem solving also isn't a subject on the curriculum, and yet it's a vital life skill through which children can learn in so many other subject disciplines. And I think drama occupies exactly that same role.